Hey everybody, it's me, it's Undead Viking. I'm here with another video review. Uh, coming from my uh, gaming dojo, here I am. Uh, I, the game I'm reviewing today is called Dead at 17, The Battle for Darlington Hills. That is a giant mouthful of a game name, so I'm just going to call it uh, Dead at 17. Uh, Dead at 17, I guess, is a comic book. Uh, the reason I say I guess is because I didn't know it was a comic book until I didn't even exist until I was approached to do this uh, review, and it was mentioned in passing uh, by by the creator, Derek, and uh, and so I, I actually went and I looked into it, and I, I purchased some ebooks of it, and it's it's a very entertaining comic book, actually, about um, these teenage girls that are saving the world from demons trying to destroy it. And, uh, and, and so I was glad I did that, because as I started playing this game, um, you know, it was kind of neat to see uh, the art and, and see the names of the people that I recognized from the stuff that I read. Now, that being said, um, you do not have to be a fan of uh, the, the, uh, the the comic book or know anything about the comic book to enjoy this game. Um, but uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, as I always do. Um, but uh, let me just say this. Uh, when he, I was told this it was a deck builder, I was like, oh, gosh. You know, and I'll go more into that about the whole deck building thing in my conclusion. But um, I was extremely surprised and pleasantly surprised by this game and how much fun I was having with it as I was playing it. And it was definitely a Mrs. Undead Viking fan favorite as well. So, um, uh you know, I, 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 that, that of course makes it an absolute winner. If my wife actually asks to play the game, uh, which has happened maybe a half dozen times of the hundreds of games that we've played together, uh, then uh, I know I've got a winner on my hands. But regardless, um, I'm going to show you how to play the game. It should be pretty simple. I mean, it should be pretty simple. It should be pretty easy to follow, especially if you've played any sort of deck building game yourself. And then we'll come back and I'm going to go kind of on a, a lengthy uh, conclusion because I have a few things I want to talk about as far as deck builders and what this uh, deck builder actually um, brings to the table that I was actually uh, uh, very pleased to experience. But uh, I'm going to show you. I don't have a, unfortunately, I don't have, I can show you, I can show you this cutie. That's Nara. She's the hero. Hmm, she's got an axe. I don't know, I don't know if there is a, uh, like, for lack of a better word, a, a fetish for uh, axe-wielding girls in uh, uh, schoolgirl outfits, but, um, yum. Anyway, so, uh, all right, I will go ahead and I will, um, I'll, I'll show you how to play the game, and then we'll come back here where I'm sitting, and I'll tell you exactly uh, what I think of the game. Now, if you want to excuse me, I'm just going to stare at this for a while. Hmm. All right, what you see in front of you is uh, the game Dead at 17. It isn't, uh, I'm going to be setting up the game as I talk here, so just uh, I'll go over some of the components and what everything does and what everything has. And But um, just to quickly, uh, these are the three different locations uh, that uh, you will be battling over. Um, the, the bad person wants to put their evil minions in play, and these you can see there's these three spots. They want to put their evil minions in play, and, and hopefully they can survive a turn while they're there. And Because uh, after they've been there and they've survived, they will focus power on those locations, uh, the power uh, being represented by these little tokens here. And once you get enough power... Uh, 15 exactly um, you open up the gate to hell at that location and uh, and and if the bad person the evil dude can uh, get two of these locations uh, gates opened at them uh, they'll win the game uh, to begin the game you have to, depending on how much number of people are playing will determine uh, which uh, evil uh, person or evil evil creature evil well evil queen evil demon or this guy this uh, disembodied head by the name of of pitch um, if you're playing just a two-player game you will play pitch if you are playing a three-player game um, you will be playing uh, balabog this this demon pretty cool looking and finally if you're playing the full four-player game um, you will get to play uh, this naughty little girl uh, the witch queen which, um, uh, and obviously, like, the, these are the starting decks as well as the avatar for each person. And, like, so, like, the, obviously the starting deck for Pitch is, is a lot weaker than the starting deck for the Witch Queen. Because the Witch Queen, obviously, since you're playing uh, three other people, uh, you need that to be able to... Uh, uh, combat like three other people. You need to be more powerful. But since I got just showing a two-player game, uh, we'll be taking pitch 
and uh, his starting deck of 10 cards, which include um, like cards that you know pretty much do anything, do nothing, like this empty void. Uh, but then here's some minions, like this imp, um, and then like an aether spark, which gives you bonus supply and things like that. And so, you know, these will, uh, you, you want obviously, um, like to get minions out, and you can see that you have humans, and you have undead, and you have demons. Now, the reason why that's important is because, uh, as the evil person, you get to pick a specialization. Um, undead spec, demon spec, or human spec. And so you can kind of pick one of these and kind of decide um, what route you're going to go, like you know, which, which, which minion you're going to focus on. And let's just take undead, because I like undead because it says like it, they have two sets of powers. Uh, this is the lower level power, this is the top level power. Um, undead minions at the cemetery location ignore the first melee attack each turn, which is awesome. And then I like this, at the start of your turn, if you have two undead in play, you may return an undead from your discard pile to play. You notice that this is the cost to upgrade, and so that's seven. And what happens, you just, if you upgrade, you have this little token here that you just put on this to, to mark. You use this to mark which power you have. And once you get that power, it's yours. So we're going to take Undead, and uh, that'll be uh, Pitch's ability. And we'll just go ahead and put that over there for right now. Uh, now, the, the good guys have these three uh, young girls to pick from. Uh, we, we, we have a Hazy. Uh, that is Anara's best friend. Um, Asia, uh, another another uh, uh, like woman or young young lady who is fighting the, uh, the evil people, and Nara, who of course is our uh, our hero of the comics. So we'll take Nara, and just like uh, the the undead, you get to pick a a spec ranged magic and melee. And so melee cards which probably plus one supply. Melee attacks can hit one additional minion not at your avatar's current location. Now, um, since you'll be putting your avatar, you actually like place it uh, where where they're at, where they're fighting. Uh, you know, uh, melee attacks uh, can only affect the things at their spot. And I found that well, first of all, she's got the axe anyway. I found that the melee spec being able to like damage somebody else otherwise is actually pretty good. I mean, these are pretty good too, like has first magic attack, has plus one damage, all magic attacks have plus one. On the first ranged, you gain costs one less each turn, and uh, once per turn when you play a range, draw a card. Now, I'm, I'm going to take the melee, but you know, I think that they're both, you know, really powerful, and obviously when you play uh, with more players, you, get, you, you can't all take the same spec, and so it's nice to diversify and have people that are specialized. It should be noted that if you do do magic attacks, you can attack the other, or, and range for that matter, you can attack the other locations. Uh, you don't have to uh, just attack the spot you're at. You can move, obviously. Once You don't just get stuck at uh, the, 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 the cemetery if you choose that where to go. But we're going to take the melee spec. And just like um, uh, the the bad guys, uh, you have this little marker. To say, and those cost seven as well. So we'll do that, and we'll just we'll put her in the middle there, and uh, she, you know she's going to be at the Darlington Cemetery, and she also has you know, the starting uh, thing. You know she has diary pages that have give plus one supply. These blank pages don't do anything, and then you know knife, glowing palm, magic damage, and so you know she has like in the pistol two range damage, and so on and so forth. And so you you shuffle those up. I didn't shuffle up uh, the bad guy's deck. I should do that here in Pitch's deck. So I'll put that right there. And I'll shuffle up his. Now, the avatar for the, the evil guy doesn't come out until um, after the, the, uh, the, the good player <coughs> has uh, basically summoned them out of uh, the, 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 where they're hiding. And that happens when they're able to charge these runes. Now, this is another very important part of the good player. Um, you start with this lesser rune, and you, it takes two charges to charge that up. And once it's charged, you turn it over, meaning that, that that's charged, and you're done with that. Um, the greater runes, uh, and then there's there's a rune and a greater rune. And so you have to go in order. And then these have a specific 
uh, things that have to happen uh, for them to, to be flipped over so you can charge up the next rune. And so this one is, you must have 15 cards in your discard pile uh, to flip over. Um, and this one says, uh, lesser rune and rune must be charged and you have to have your spec level to flip. But once you have them flipped, once again, you can charge it up and like, you know, and it's like when it's charged, look, it gives you a supply and magic damage. And you can see when this is two supply and two magic damage when charged. And the important thing is once you've, uh, you've charged up all three of your runes, uh, then that is when, uh, you know, Pitch, in this case, would uh, come forth. And he, he, you put him at a location, and uh, as long as he doesn't have any minions at that location, uh, you can attack him directly. And if you can manage to knock him out, and I, he has 15 toughness, 15 hit points, basically. If you can knock him out, then that's how the good guys win the game. So there you go. So uh, we've got her at the at the cemetery uh, we've got the starting decks now the, the other thing we have to do is in this area we're going to be placing the five cards from the supply deck that are available and there's this giant deck of 108 cards here and you turn five of them over i'm going to put them down there but i'm just going to show them to you okay you can notice that some of these decks uh, like they're going to have a green part that this is that's the uh the pitch and the evil because he's green you can see green cards over there and you notice that the bottom part is orange so depending on who takes it it has certain powers well the bad guys got really lucky here and i got all uh green which i'm gonna i'm gonna cheat here and uh grab a couple of orange ones just so we can uh even it out here a little bit let's go ahead and put a couple of these back there we go Sorry about that. But anyway, so now you can see there's some orange and some green. Now, there's the cost and supply that it's gonna cost to take the items. And and so some of them are just like those minions, like this Nakash, who's pretty awesome, you know, seven and, uh, you know, plus three supply. He can remove a minion from play. Look, he's got 12 toughness. He's pretty tough, right? But you can notice that down below it costs two if the, the good person wants to take this, if Nara wants to take it. And it's not nearly as good. Plus one supply, it's an action. One minion takes damage equal to half its toughness rounded down. You know, pretty good, but not nearly as good as how good Nakash is. Now that's where the really cool part of the game comes in, is that a lot of times these cards um, are really good for one side, like here's only the best. You may destroy up to two cards from your hand or discard pile, which is awesome. You're culling cards out of your deck. And then over here, Exploding Corpse. Well, you know, it's a decent minion, I guess, but it's not nearly as good as that. Notice it costs less. So when you're playing, um, you'll be buying cards that probably aren't really that good just to keep them out of your opponent's hands. And that's a really, really awesome aspect of this game. Uh, I'll probably go into more of that uh, when I get to my uh, the, the, the conclusion of this. So you place those out there like so. And so now you have... And the people who have played Ascension, you, you know, you'll probably see that that's uh, fairly recognizable as far as um, that, that aspect. And of course there is um, this part uh, that these are the cards that are always available. Um, they, they cost two and attach it. you can attach this to a minion in play. You can have that and that adds three toughness. Or, and then this one, it does one damage and you may charge a rune. And so these are, they cost two. And also when you get done to get to the supply phase, um, if you can't buy anything else and you can't even afford that, you can still take one of those cards. So um, the bad guys start first. So you take the top five cards off your deck, just like any other deck builder. Usually it's you know half the deck. There's ten cards in the deck. You can see, uh, you know, I have this empty void which does nothing, but I have an acolyte and three aether sparks. So, and technically um, the the acolyte actually gives you a plus one supply as well. So when you, you play it, you'll like say, okay, well, he's human. I don't want to put him in, in the graveyard just yet. So let's go ahead and, and, and put that guy there. So then there's an acolyte in that location. And that's one and then three supply. So I have a total of four. And so I can buy a card that's four. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and look. And um, there's this sacrificial conspirator. He's pretty cool. There's no undead. So that kind of upsets me a little bit that I can't. Uh, get it get an undead. Well, there's an exploding corpse, I guess, and that's that one that that would be a really good card for her So I'm gonna take that actually because it's undead Remember I'm undead spec so I'm gonna have that and so I take those cards as you you know probably well know every uh, 
uh, like you put those in your discard pile like that and then you have your next five cards as part of your uh, next hand. So that would be like the the good person's turn or the bad like the evil guy's turn. Uh, the now we'll go ahead one two three four five take five cards from Nara and we'll look and she's got a knife that does one damage and uh, you know one two uh, three four so she's got like five points but notice she's not at that location uh, but you know we'll move there and we'll do we can go there like this. So now she's she's gonna go to Nara's house and hey, what are you doing in my house? And we're gonna play the knife, and that's gonna do one melee damage uh, to the um, to that location. So we're gonna take and he's got two toughness, so we've done one point of damage to him. The damage stays there, so we can if we hit him again, he's gonna be he's gonna be dead. And it should be noted that when you take out minions, they go back to the discard pile. They aren't, they aren't killed. They do get to go back to the discard pile of the. Uh, of, of the of, of pitch and so you know we got that we have five but remember because we're melee spec uh, melee cards provide plus one supply and so uh, so we actually have six. Oh, and I forgot to replace that card like so so we have six which is you know pretty good number um, I'm looking here and well there's a spiritual reflection which and this efficient marksman skill, and so we can take these two. And remember, I'm taking, and then I'm taking Nakash. So now Nakash can't be give, can't be taken by the the, the, uh, the by pitch. And we have a spiritual reflection uh, that, that, that we refer to earlier. But there, um, plus one supply, two range damage. You may destroy a card from your hand or discard pile. Pretty good. Plus, you kept this glowing golem out of out of uh, the hands of the other player. So you take those. You put them down, and now then then the next player would go. But the first thing you do is because we were in this location, and that acolyte survived, we go ahead and we put one because he focused one power on that location. If I can get 14 more power, I'll be able to flip that over, and then there'll be a gate opened. And uh, the other th and the thing is, just like damage never goes away, um, these won't go away. But there are different spells and abilities that you can get in the uh, in the deck that allow you to remove power from locations. So um, it seems like uh, like the 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 good guys. I'll have to replace these here real quick. The 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 bad guys might have a little bit of a advantage, but you do have the ability um, as Nara and her uh, her allies to get the power that's being focused off of those locations to prevent it from happening. It's it's not a really difficult um, game to to learn to play. Like I said, if you've played deck builders before, it's pretty straightforward. But um, the the interaction and uh, the, the the one on one uh, you know, like fighting and, and, the, and the seesaw battle uh, really make this game a lot of fun. But I'm going to go into that in a lot more detail uh, when I when I do my conclusion, and I'll do that right now. So here we go. Oh, back so soon? Are we okay? So there you go. Uh, now you know how to play uh, uh, Dead at 17, the battle for Darlington Hills. <coughs> okay, I mentioned um, in my in my preview preview in my I mentioned in my uh, uh, intro uh, that I was going to kind of go in and talk about a few some deck building stuff and and I'm going to and I'll try to make this quick. But everybody remembers the first time they played and sat down and played Dominion and and I remember being blown away by the game. I was like, whoa, this is awesome. This is a lot of fun. And and I played it, Dominion, a ton of times. And I had fun, I'd say, 90% of the time that I played it. And then other deck builders started coming out. Thunderstone, um, Ascension, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to list off. You know, you know what I mean. And and the, and each of them tried to have something innovative and different, and tried to like, you know, spin things. I remember Thunderstone. The whole thing was deck building with a purpose. You know, it was just it was just a rethemed Dominion almost. But you know, it was like, oh, you're a dungeon. You're 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 killing monsters kind of thing. And and um, you know, the Ascension Rise of the God Slayer. I mean, that was like one of those games. That was it was it was almost really really good just because of its simplicity. Because of the fact that it was just very, uh, uh, you know, very easy to set up and just you know and you know easy to play the game and and, and buy those cards and whatever, and and so and the different deck builders you know um, 
whatever they were. I mean, they had some success and they and some of them flourished and some of them kind of withered on the vine and, and vanished. And um, I remember being like excited to try out like uh, the high command games at Gen Con because that was the new the new cool deck builder that was coming out. And I remember playing it and I was like, okay, that was fun. And then I played it again. I was like, eh, eh. I played it again. I was like, eh. yeah, this is this is boring. <laughs> you know, I mean, because I, I I guess I just I've had enough of the, um, you know, I, I you know draw five, look at them, eh, whatever, buy that, buy that, buy that, lather, rinse, repeat, and um, I just I never you know. Uh, at the time, I thought that, like, Dominion had kind of done the best it could possibly have done. I mean, eventually it had too many cards and too many different rules and too many expansions, and it just kind of got weighed down by everything. I know there's people out there who love it, but anyway, I, I just, I, I haven't played Dominion in years, and there's a reason why. So, when I heard, hey, here's this deck builder, I was just like, all right, well, you know, I mean... I, I, I hate to poo-poo a game before I even give it a shot, but I told the designer, yeah, let's give it a try. And plus, I'll be completely honest, the theme of it really struck me, and I was like, oh, it looks, that looks pretty cool, actually. And so I got the game, and I, I read the rules, and of course the rules are, as you notice, the game is fairly simple and fairly easy to, to pick up. And then I started realizing, this is, this is something new for me. Now, I know there's going to be somebody out there who says, oh, that, that, I've seen that in this game, or I know that's nothing new. But there's two things that, like, I like, I, I want out of my deck building game. I don't want to have to dig through and find, okay, these are the ten cards we're going to use, now set up this, this deck. And, you know, why do you think people love playing deck builders on, on iPads and things like that? Because there's no setup. It does it for you automatically, and and so that you know it, I I don't like that aspect. I don't like playing a game on a, on, a, on a tablet either. I don't like that. But the the whole uh, the, the the whole setup is I I don't like that, and that's why I think I liked Ascension so much back in the day when I still used to play it was because it was just bap bap there you're ready to play let's go, and this game has adopted that. You have this ridiculously giant deck of 108 cards that you get to that you get to purchase from you throw five of them down and you just start buying cards out of that deck there's no like weird setup there's no okay go through the deck and find these cards that you want and then those are the ones that we're going to use in this game and that's the scenario we're going to play no it's just they're, they're this giant deck start flipping the cards over great i can set up this game in five minutes and be ready to play so right off the bat uh, this game was, was 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 hitting a home run for me. The next thing up in the line was I wasn't tending my own garden in this game, and I've said that in many of my reviews. You know, it's like, oh, look at this cool little this cool little engine I've made, and it's better than your engine. It's more polished, therefore I win the game. I don't. Those games have their place, but I, you know, I'm 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 getting away from that. I want conflict. I want interaction. I want I want to like feel like I'm actually doing something to somebody. And here's a deck builder where I am in direct conflict with somebody else. My wife and I are playing the game. Great two-player game. I've played it four players. It was great as a four-player game too, but I think this game shines as a two-player. But great two-player game. Here's my evil minions. I'm going to take over the world. Oh, no, you don't. I'm shooting them as fast as you make them. Okay, here's this. I'm, I'm, I'm destroying this, you know. And these games and and it's so well balanced that it just it, it just seems like you're always on this really easy teeter totter and it, it it seems like it always just comes down to like um uh, just getting that one good card in that one moment and and having that one awesome play that allows you to you know take a card to your discard pile or something and that's to say and a lot of people are saying well then is this all luck well no it isn't because you actually and because of the fact that you kind of set up your 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 deck with your spec and um, with your focus and when you kind of can get into the game and and you can say this game I'm gonna focus on you know getting my spells and my and my and, and boosting my minions this game you know and then if you're the 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 the, the, the good player you can say <coughs> um, this game I'm gonna like I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take range spec you know because I want to be able to be highly mobile and be able to do damage uh, at a distance and things like that and you can start 
gunning for that. Now, the, but the cool thing about the game is that, you know, you, there's no guarantee you're going to get the cards that you want out of this giant deck. And so it teaches you to kind of think on the fly and to, like, start, you know, well, this isn't working. I need I need to switch. I need to do other things. And, and um, I mean, the core element of, of the deck builder still exists. I mean, you want to cull the, the crud out of your deck and, you know, keep um, the other, you know, the other, the good cards in there. But, um, you know, it's just, I think I don't care so much that that's, that's an integral part of it because of the fact, like I said, this game is really thematically driven. I love the theme that's going to, I think the art is amazing. And, you know, the coolest thing I think about the game, in my opinion, is that because these cards, as I said when I was telling you how to play, they, they have this the, the big thing up here, and then they, they can be used by either the, the good guy or the bad guy. So, like, here's one that's orange. The big thing is orange. So that's for the good guy. I mean, for Nara, you know, it's, it's really good. And then, so for her, <coughs> this particular card would cost six, but it's pretty awesome. <coughs> Nara's Prayer, because, uh, you know, five damage and you can charge a ruin. I mean, that, 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 that's awesome. Plus, plus three supply, too. Oh, jeez, that, that is a really good card. But then, over here, it's like, this costs three if I'm the bad guy, and it's just, oh, fresh corpse, you know. Well, it's like, okay, plus one supply, it's, it's got a two toughness, and it helps out the other ones. I mean, it's not a bad card, but not nearly as good as this. So, as the bad guy, I'm looking at this card, and I'm saying, well, you know, that's pretty good. But let's just say, for example, like... You know, this, this Arcane Blaspheme is out there, and that's like a great card. You know, look at an opponent's hand, discard all their magic cards. Ha! You know, there you go. Get rid of those. You're not going to get those. That's a great card to have. So, you, you're forced to have the question. Do I take the really good card that helps me a lot? Or do I take the card that doesn't help me so much, but I keep the other player from getting the really awesome part? And that part of the game, I mean, combined with the fact that I'm actually directly fighting somebody, makes this game awesome for me. I, 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 there's like, and, you know, plus the fact that there's so many of these that, you know, no two games are alike. There's lots of replayability. This is one of those games that you, it, it, it goes quick. The game does not take a long time to play. And you immediately get done and you're saying, I want to play it again. Because I wanna, I wanna try to get those same cards, or I wanna, I wanna do something different this time. I wanna see if I can beat you, doing something like that. And usually because they're, they're so close, you're like so close to getting that second gate to hell opened, and and you know your your you know pitch has been summoned and he's out there and they're doing damage, and you're you know just one more turn, and I can I can get those minions, and then like my wife of course just she always beats me at games, and like you know sure enough like you know she does just enough damage to take me out and kill me, which the next turn I would have easily won. I would have destroyed the world. But that's great though. I mean, you know, fine. I mean, losing isn't awesome, but I mean, but the game told me a story. It, it, it was gripping. It was fun. And it was like, it was one of those things where it's like, even though you lost, you still, you still feel kind of good because I mean, it was just like, well, you know, that was hard fought. That was, that was just an excellent experience, if you will. So there you go. Um, bottom line is, is that if you're a fan of this comic book series, I think this is a must buy. If you're a fan of deck building and you want to try something that, that's new and kind of different, and I know a lot of people are going to say, it's not new, it's not different, I've played that in this game. Well, you know what, this game was new and different to me and it felt really awesome. And I didn't think I was ever going to get excited about a deck building game again. And I was, and I am, playing this game. So there you go. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, please uh, leave those below in the comments. I'm sure that I'll try to answer those as best I can, and I'm pretty positive that uh, the designer of the game will actually be more than happy to, to pipe in as well if, if you have any uh, clarifications you're looking for. Um, if you think this is a game you want to pick up, please go to the Kickstarter page to get some more information and maybe back it with your hard-earned dough so you can get a copy of the game delivered to you once it is published. Uh, as always, I greatly appreciate you taking Taking the time to watch me do this and until next time this was undead viking you have an awesome day bye bye now